I often see debate online or I hear at woodworking shows about whether it's a good idea to hollow grind your tools or a bad idea. To understand what I mean, you have to understand what a hollow grind is. If you sharpen a tool on a flat stone, the bevel will be flat. But if you grind your tool on a machine with a wheel, such as this CBN wheel on a bench grinder, the bevel will take on the shape of the wheel. So this creates a hollow or concave surface. Many people like a hollow grind because as they return to the flat stone for their final honing, they can feel those two distinct points, the edge and the heel, more easily than they could a single bevel. So this makes it easier to find and hold the proper angle when you're freehand sharpening. And it eliminates the need for the very fine grit stones to wear away all the steel on the entire bevel in order to achieve a razor sharp cutting edge. But some people claim a hollow grind can be a bad thing. They argue that when you hollow out the bevel, you create a thinner, more brittle cutting edge. And looking at the drawings that people use to illustrate hollow grinds, you can sort of see their point. But these drawings are often dramatically exaggerated. Let's dispense with the exaggerations and see the real effect a hollow grind has on an edge. This drawing illustrates a quarter inch thick chisel with a flat ground 25 degree bevel. And here is how it might change if that same 25 degree bevel was hollow ground on a six inch grinding wheel. The difference isn't dramatic, but it is visible. If you used an eight inch grinding wheel, the difference would be slightly less significant and a 10 inch wheel, even less so. Remember, we're talking about the hollow and how it changes the cutting edge. Its effect in the middle of the bevel is irrelevant to the edge's durability. And as you can see in this greatly magnified but still scale drawing, the actual change to the cutting edge is minimal. But there are changes, so let's take a closer look. For the sake of discussion, we'll focus on the effect of a six inch grinder since this creates the most dramatic hollow. And let's zoom in on the last 32nd of an inch at the tip of the chisel where all the cutting occurs. The loss of the blue portion of the bevel due to the hollow grind did alter the cutting edge. Even though the tool rest was set to grind at 25 degrees, the hollowing effect changes the angle of that very edge to about 20 degrees, making the steel at that critical cutting point a little thinner. But here's the thing, most tools are honed not to 25 degrees, but to 30. You may grind to 25, which is why I illustrated it here. But the final sharpening or honing is often done on a stone or a flat abrasive surface at a slightly steeper angle, such as 30 degrees. This forms a micro bevel along the cutting edge, which effectively knocks the end off the hollow grind. This eliminates the hollow grind's thinning effect on that critical area. So it's clear that a hollow grind has no effect on the cutting edge of a tool if you follow up the grinder with a flat stone, creating a steeper micro bevel, as is very common in tool sharpening. But maybe you don't do it that way. CBN grinding wheels and sharpening systems like the Tormac are available in very fine grits. Maybe you're all about power, you never use flat stones, perhaps you don't even create a micro bevel at all. Will a hollow grind weaken an edge that comes right off the grinder? Here's a 30 degree grind such as you might create with a six inch grinder when you plan on taking the tool right to the work from the grinder. Again, the blue area represents the effect of the hollow grind as compared to a flat bevel, and the vertical divider represents the 32nd of an inch at the tip where the cutting occurs. That sliver of blue near the tip tells us that this hollow grind affects the cutting edge by reducing the angle of that point from the intended 30 degrees to about 27 degrees. This also slightly thins the steel. Still, we're often told that the optimal angle for performance and durability in most woodworking tools is around 30 degrees and 27 is not 30. So consider this. Here I bumped my grinder's tool rest angle up to about 34 degrees instead of 30. The blue still represents the reduction in steel caused by the six inch hollow grind. But now the effective angle of the remaining steel at the cutting edge is back to 30 degrees. Any thinning effect caused by the hollow grind has been canceled out merely by bumping the angle of the tool rest up three or four degrees. In simple terms, we made the edge thicker so we could then make it thinner. 
I believe some will argue about this all day long, but these scale drawings tell me three things. First, that a hollow grind has no effect on the cutting edge of a tool that is honed on a stone to create a micro bevel. Second, that any thinning effect a hollow grind may cause to the cutting edge can be eliminated by setting the grinder's tool rest just three or four degrees steeper. And third, when you magnify a drawing, you blow things way out of proportion. Because here's the reality of a hollow grind. Perhaps that's the real lesson here. Tiny things become big problems if we make them out to be so. Just because a problem may exist in theory doesn't mean it will in actual practice when you put steel to wood. I personally have no intention of adjusting my bevels to 34 degrees to combat the effects of a hollow grind because those effects are already so minimal that they're not even noticeable on my workbench. See you next time. Some folks are a pleasure to work with, like Ken Rizzo over at woodturnerswonders.com. That's where I get my turning stuff, like sanding supplies and CBN wheels for my grinder. Seriously, if you haven't seen what CBN wheels can do for you, you are missing out. I'll put a link below this video. Use it and tell Ken I sent you. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.